Would you take this subway if you had the choice? The filth. The stench. The unsightliness. It's probably not what you would expect for a first world city like New York. But what if the subway looked like this? This. And this? This is exactly the kind of world-class subway you would expect to ride in Singapore. Singapore's subway system, also known as the Mass Rapid Transit or MRT in short, is one of the most efficient and reliable transportation systems in the world, and probably the cleanest subway you can find. Yet, there was a time when the Singapore government dismissed the need for the MRT, which would have altered the course of the country's development. Stay tuned to find out about the untold truth of the MRT and why it is world-class. After Singapore got expelled from Malaysia and gained independence against its own will in 1965, the young nation focused intensely on developing its industries and constructing public housing for its growing population. This meant that more people had to be housed outside of the central region due to land scarcity in the city center. In doing so, travel demand increased exponentially because citizens now had to be even more well connected. Yet, back then, the predominant mode of local transportation was by car and bus, which made the roads very congested. Acknowledging that there was an urgent need for a more sustainable approach to land use and transportation, Singapore approached the United Nations Development Program to address this issue. The four-year study resulted in the creation of a comprehensive blueprint to guide the country's land usage. The study also found that due to physical land constraints, it was not feasible for Singapore to build more roads to meet the increasing transportation demands. The conclusion was that a rail transit system was necessary to meet the transportation needs of the city-state by 1992. However, building the MRT was not a priority for the government at that time due to several considerations. One of the primary reasons was the high cost of construction and maintenance. Building the MRT would require a substantial investment in infrastructure, including tunnels, tracks, and stations. Being a developing nation with limited financial resources, the government was keen to focus on other priorities such as housing, defense, healthcare, and education. Another reason was the perceived lack of demand. Although Singapore's population was increasing, it was still considered relatively small. While the government was starting to house its citizens outside the central region, the majority of the people still lived in public housing flats concentrated around the city center. Many policymakers believed that MRT would not be cost-effective since it would not have enough ridership to justify the investment. Over the next few years, Singapore invited various foreign experts, including a team of specialists from Harvard University, to study the feasibility of building a rail transit system. The Harvard University team later concluded that an all-bus system would adequately meet Singapore's transportation needs till the 1990s, and would cost far lesser than a rail transit system. Given the different outcomes of the studies conducted, there was a divide in opinions within the government. The late Mr. Ong Teng Chong, who was the Minister of Communications back then, and was Singapore's fifth president incidentally, strongly believed that the MRT was necessary for Singapore. However, he was met with strong opposition from the likes of first-generation leader Mr. Go Keng Sui, who was the Deputy Prime Minister, and Mr. Tony Tan, who was the Trade and Industry Minister, and later the seventh president of Singapore. Mr. Tan in particular, thought it was foolish to build the MRT and that resources should be concentrated on building more public housing. Despite the debate within the government, Mr. Ong went ahead to establish the Provisional Mass Rapid Transit Authority in 1980 to oversee the preparatory work for the possible construction of the MRT system. He talked about the MRT system in several public speeches, highlighting its potential to improve Singaporeans' quality of life and urban mobility, benefit the economy, and enhance the value of Singapore's real estate. He also cited examples of cities such as Tokyo and London that were able to significantly improve their urban and economic development with their subway systems. But what was it that put Singapore on the course of building the MRT? In 1981, the government gave the go-ahead to build the MRT system, following the comprehensive traffic study, which found that an all-bus system was not practical after all, and put to rest the ongoing debate. If Mr. Ong had not soldiered on, it is quite possible that the MRT may not have become a reality. Finally, on the 7th of November 1987, the MRT was launched with five MRT stations on the north-south line spanning a mere 6 km in length. The five stations were Yo Chu Kang, Ang Mo Kio, Bishan, Bradle and To Pio. A month later, nine more stations were added to the north-south line and east-west line. Another six more stations were added to the east-west line in 1988. Today, the MRT system has expanded to six MRT lines covering 200 kilometers, 
and has more than 140 stations serving at least 3 million commuters daily. The MRT network connects almost all major business districts, residential areas, and tourist destinations in Singapore, making it easy for residents and visitors to travel from one place to another. Moreover, the MRT network is well integrated with other modes of transport such as buses, making it easy for people to switch from one mode of transport to another. Yet, Singapore is not resting on its laurels. To achieve its ambitious goal of enabling 8 in 10 households to be located within 10 minutes of an MRT station, the nation aims to expand the MRT network to about 360 kilometers by 2030. For example, the 7th MRT line in Singapore, known as the Jurong Region Line, will greatly enhance connectivity in the western region of Singapore and facilitate the growth of Jurong, which is expected to become the largest commercial hub outside of the central business district. Commuters can expect convenient access to key nodes in Jurong, such as the Jurong Industrial Estate, Jurong Innovation District, and Nanyang Technological University. The Cross Island Line will be Singapore's eighth MRT line, and it will be housed entirely underground over a stretch of more than 50 kilometers. This line will connect commuters to the eastern, western, and northeastern regions of Singapore, and allow them to reach major hubs like Jurong Lake District, Punggol Digital District, and the Chungi region. Once the expansion is completed, Singapore's total rail length would beat that of major cities such as Tokyo and Hong Kong, and be on par with New York or London. But what exactly makes the MRT world class? One of the key factors contributing to Singapore's excellent subway is its efficiency. The MRT network operates on a highly efficient and reliable system that enables trains to run on time, every time. This is achieved through advanced technology, such as the automatic train control system which regulates train speed and distance between trains. The system ensures that trains run at optimal speeds, which reduces travel time. The MRT also has a highly reliable signaling system, which ensures that trains run on time, and passengers can rely on the MRT system to get them to their destinations in a timely manner. The trains run frequently, with an average wait time of just 2 to 3 minutes during peak hours. In contrast, New York's subway system, also known as the Metropolitan Transportation Authority, or MTA, has faced numerous challenges in recent years, including delays, service disruptions, and aging infrastructure. The system is notorious for its delays, with an average wait time of around 5 to 7 minutes during peak hours. In addition, the MTA has been criticized for poor maintenance and outdated technology. Another reason why the MRT is world-class is its pristine cleanliness and well-maintained trains and stations. With a strong culture of cleanliness and hygiene, built through education and public campaigns, citizens are conscious of their own hygiene habits, and tend to clean up after themselves when they take the MRT. Moreover, passengers are prohibited from smoking, eating and drinking in the stations and trains. Signages posted around the stations and in the trains serve as constant reminders to passengers, and these rules are enforced by security personnel and staff. If you are found to have violated any of the rules, a fine or warning could be meted out. Also, the MRT system is designed to be easy to clean and maintain. The trains are made of durable materials that are resistant to stains and can be easily cleaned. In addition, the trains and stations are equipped with modern cleaning equipment and technologies, such as high-pressure washers and robot cleaners that allow for quick and efficient cleaning. Last but not least, a dedicated team of cleaners is employed to work around the clock to keep the stations and trains clean. They are also supported by a management team that monitors cleanliness standards and ensures that any issues are promptly addressed. Yet, such cleanliness can often be taken for granted. New York's MTA has faced numerous challenges when it comes to cleanliness. The system is often plagued by garbage and litter attracting rats, and the stations can be dirty and poorly maintained. Elevators in the stations are known to reek the smell of urine. Additionally, the MTA has struggled to keep up with the maintenance of its aging infrastructure, which can lead to issues such as leaking water and broken escalators. And it is common to see trains being vandalized, which adds to the unsightliness. Unlike the MTA that has been plagued by safety issues including train derailments and track fires, Singapore's MRT has an excellent safety record, which is another reason why it's one of the world's best subway. With the sophisticated technology employed to monitor and control the speed and position of trains, the automatic train control system ensures that trains maintain a safe distance from each other and that they do not exceed the speed limit. The system is also able to detect any faults or problems with the train or track, 
and can automatically stop the train in the event of an emergency. The MRT system also has a comprehensive fire safety system, which includes fire detectors and automatic fire suppression systems in each carriage. In the event of a fire, the system can quickly detect and suppress the flames, minimizing the risk of injury or damage to the train. To prevent people from falling onto the tracks, platform screen doors are installed. They are located between the station platform and the train tracks, and act as a safety barrier for commuters. These screen doors open or close concurrently with the train doors and minimizes disruption to train services due to unauthorized entry to the tracks. Besides its efficiency, cleanliness and safety, the Singapore government has ensured that the MRT is easily accessible to everyone, including people with disabilities. Tactile ground surface indicators are present at train stations to assist visually impaired commuters in navigating from the station's entrance to the wider fare gates and accessing the lift that leads to the platform. Additionally, there are indicators that lead to the passenger service center and the disabled friendly toilet within the station. To help the visually impaired, the names of stations are announced as the train arrives while the name of the next station is announced as the train moves off. The MRT also has wheelchair-friendly trains and stations, with barrier-free access and braille signages. At each MRT station, priority queues for seniors, expectant mothers, wheelchair users, and parents traveling with strollers are also available. The way in which the MRT is designed to be inclusive is indeed one of the key factors that make it world-class. But wait till you hear about the crazy technologies that the MRT has adopted. One of the most significant technological advancements adopted by the MRT is the use of the contactless smart card, known as the Easy Link card. The Easy Link card allows commuters to pay for their fares using a simple tap and go system, eliminating the need for physical tickets. This not only reduces the time required for boarding but also minimizes the amount of paper waste generated by the system. Additionally, the MRT network has implemented various digital initiatives, such as the My Transport app which has made it easier for commuters to plan their journeys, and even helps calculate the fares and travel times. Self-assisted kiosks have also been recently introduced to the new Thomson East Coast Line. The kiosks are user-friendly ticketing machines that allow commuters to speak to a customer service officer using a video call feature if they need immediate assistance. A new passenger load information system was also piloted on the downtown line to allow for more effective passenger distribution and facilitate smoother boarding. The system displays on LCD screens the loading level of each train carriage using color codes as the train approaches a station. A green color code indicates that a train carriage is less crowded while red means that there is limited standing capacity. Armed with the knowledge of how crowded a train carriage might be, commuters can then decide to board train carriages that are less crowded. Singapore is also committed to ensuring that the MRT is environmentally sustainable. To cope with the humid weather, the platform screen doors that we talked about earlier, coupled with the use of an energy-efficient system design, help to lower the consumption of energy for air conditioning in underground stations. For stations that are located above ground, a variety of cooling solutions are employed such as installing high-volume, low-speed fans, and having greenery on the building facades. To further reduce energy consumption, motion sensors are used to activate lighting and fans at toilets and staircases in the stations when there is footfall. Solar panels are also installed on the roofs of stations to harness energy for the MRT stations. Interestingly, Singapore is currently piloting the use of an AI system that uses information such as weather conditions and ridership volume to ensure that the air-conditioned temperature is optimal in stations. Last but not least, the use of the MRT as a mode of public transport helps to reduce the number of private cars on the road, which helps to reduce the overall carbon emissions in Singapore. Another fine example of Singapore's commitment to environmental sustainability when expanding the MRT network is the construction of the Cross Island Line. Being a fully underground network, extensive studies were conducted, and nature groups were consulted, to ensure that the construction of the tunnels would have minimal impact on the environment, and the flora and fauna in the central catchment nature reserve, where the tunnels will pass through. Inevitably, with some of the MRT lines in operation for more than three decades, commuters have in recent times experienced service disruptions due to equipment failure, software glitches, and even power outages. This has created severe inconveniences and citizens have taken to social media to make their angst known. With the MRT operating excellently over the last few decades, Singapore is probably the victim of its own success given that commuters are so used to having their trains arrive on time.
Yet, in relative terms, service disruptions are common across aging subways all across the world and are even more severe than those experienced by the MRT. For example, in New York, commuters have come to expect service disruption to the MTA due to flooding when there is heavy rainfall or when there are signaling faults. Nonetheless, the MRT has certainly played a critical role in shaping Singapore's infrastructure and economic development, and it has become an essential part of the city-state's identity. The MRT is a testament to what can be achieved when a country is committed to providing high-quality public transport to its citizens, and it serves as a model for other countries looking to develop their transport infrastructure. Besides the MRT, Singapore is equally well known for its excellent public housing. To find out why public housing is insanely well designed, check out the next video here.